We start our journey from the book of John chapter 3. Let's read John chapter 3 from verse 1 about Nicodemus, uh, this Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews. Uh, because your Bible is taking too long to locate where John is, just look up and let's read this one. John chapter 3 verse 1. Let's read. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, come from God, for no one can do this, these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5. Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which, which is born of the spirit is spirit. Verse 7. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Eight. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Come on, tell your neighbor you are like the wind. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the gift. I pray that your spirit shall hover upon the formless and the void places of our hearts, that as we speak your word, it shall create life inside of us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Nicodemus, as a ruler of the Jews and a Pharisee, came to Jesus at night because he was careful about his reputation. Uh, there was little association between Jesus the Lord and the Pharisees and the scribes and some of the proselytes of those days. So he came to him at night because he had some disturbing questions. There's a knowledge that he needed, but he could not ask in the daylight. But that is besides the point. So he comes to Jesus and, and says, no one can do the signs that you do except that God be with him. Says, Rabbi, we know that you are from God because no one can do the signs that you do except that God be with him. Jesus was not interested with the accolades or the applause of men. He did not even acknowledge the title that he was given. But he took that moment to teach him a spiritual truth. And that truth was that no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Meaning salvation, uh, Jesus was telling Nicodemus, salvation opens your eyes to see the kingdom. So he says none can see the kingdom unless he's born again. Nicodemus does not understand this truth. So he asked Jesus, do you mean that as old as I am, I need to go back to my mother's womb so that I be born again? He says, no. No one can enter the kingdom unless he's born of the water and the spirit. Meaning that salvation opens your eyes to see the kingdom, but it's the water and the spirit that gives you access to the kingdom. Says no one can see the kingdom unless he's born again, but no one can enter the kingdom unless he's born of the water and the spirit. He says, marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. For whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. He says, for the wind blows where it likes or where it wishes. None can tell where it comes from or where it goes to. So is a man that is born of the Spirit. In other words, he was saying anyone who is born of the Spirit behaves like the wind. But no one that is, uh, that is not yet born of the Spirit and water has access to the kingdom. Today we want to talk about the Spirit because many people 
their eyes have been opened to see the kingdom but they lack entrance into the kingdom by the spirit it's the spirit that gives you access to the kingdom of god it says marvel not that i say to you you must be born again now looking at the disciples of jesus if you read luke chapter 22 and verse 56 you find the story of peter when he was approaching Jesus from a distance when he was just about to be persecuted and crucified. Now he says, and a certain servant girl, we are reading together, we agreed, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, this man was also with him. But he denied him saying, woman, I do not know him. That is the leader of the church. 58. And after a little while another saw him and said, "You also are of them." But Peter said, "Man, does it look familiar to you? Many times that you said I don't I'm not associated with them." Verse 59. Then after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed saying surely this fellow also was with him for he is a galilean what did he say but peter said man i do not know what you are saying you see he was saying a little girl came to him and said you are not you are you are, you are with them he says no i don't know what you're talking about and he says confidently somebody looked at him and said you must be one of them because you are a galilean he said man i do not know what you're talking about i am not with them do not even associate me with them but something happened in the life of peter let's go to acts chapter 2 acts chapter 2 and verse 14 acts chapter 2 verse 14 uh, What does it say? He says, but Peter standing up with the 11 raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Peter, who could not answer a simple question to a little girl. Please keep me the scriptures. These people are already seeing my face, so we want to look at the scriptures. A little girl asked him a question and he could not answer. Are you following? But then the same Peter is standing in Jerusalem in a multitude of people. Let's look at this kind of people. How many people were in Jerusalem that day because it was a, a great feast. Verse 9 of Acts chapter 2, verse 9 of Acts chapter 2. Verse 9. Who are these people? Come on don't be intimidated just read mm. Those dwelling in Mesopotamia Verse 10 Verse 11 We hear them in our own language. He said, "Are these not Galileans? Yet we hear them in our own language speaking the wondrous works of God." Meaning, if you read that carefully, you understand like the whole world was in Jerusalem, true? The whole world was in Jerusalem. Now, Peter, who could not stand before a little girl to answer a simple question, "Do you know him? Are you with them?" He says, "I do not know." do not associate me with them but peter is rising together with the 11 and saying hear ye men of jerusalem hear ye the pamphylias and the phrygias and the cyrenians and the cretians and those from libya hear ye today a man who was timid now has the courage something happened to peter but what happened to peter because there was a transformation in his life Acts chapter 2 verse 4 Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 what does it say it says
Spirit gave them utterance. But let's go back. Before Jesus left, he gave them an instruction. Let's go to Acts chapter 3, 1, 3, and 4. Acts chapter 3, chapter 1, 3, and 4. He says, to whom he, Jesus, also presented himself alive after being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days. This is what happened to Peter. He said, now as I live, please do not leave Jerusalem until I give you something. Because you are not able to live this life without him. Dwell in Jerusalem until I give you, the one is calling the promise of the father. Until he sends the promise of the father, do not move an inch. Do not make a step without him. So wait in Jerusalem. This life, my brothers and sisters, was never meant to be lived alone. There is help for us. You cannot stand and purport to live a Christian life without the enablement of the Holy Spirit. Religion tells you to be active. Some of us have come to a point that think the more active we are, the more growth we receive in our life. Do not confuse activity with growth. You can be in all church departments and yet not growing. You can participate in all activities in church because that is religion. But when you get the Holy Spirit, you get a transformation in your life. John chapter 16 verse 7, Jesus told them, it is good for me, it's expedient for me, it is advantageous for me that I go. Because if I go, then I'm going to send you help. Come on, let's read this. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. He says, this life you cannot live alone. I'm going to send a helper for you. Somebody who is going to walk with you in this life. Because without him, you cannot live a Christian life. So wait for him. Tarry and dwell there. Do not enlist in a program until you receive him. Do not leave your house until you receive him. Do not start a journey until you receive him. It is not the enlistment of the church. It's not church membership. It is the spiritual enlistment that makes a difference in your life. Enlist yourself to the Holy Spirit. Says, do not leave until you receive the endowment of the Spirit. It's advantageous for me that I go, for if I go, huh? let me tell you something. You can enter a church and join a church and now enroll in programs and, serv and services and department and you are not growing. You sit in a church for 10 years, but you are not growing. And the challenge also today is that immediately you join, we give you a place and a position. And position can sometimes be an obstacle to your growth. That you have received a position, now you are screaming on the top of your voice, but nothing is happening in your spirit. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Why did Jesus say you must receive the Holy Spirit? Why is the Holy Spirit so important to us? The Holy Spirit is important to us because, number one, the Holy Spirit is the seal upon our lives. When you have a seal on a document, it talks about its authenticity, isn't it? It talks about its origin. It talks about its source. When a company places its seal, it means it owns it, isn't it? Any document that does not have a seal, and every important document has a seal, what does a seal mean? A seal means it has been witnessed. A seal means it originates from the source. A seal, a seal means it's authenticated. And a seal is a form of identification. 
See, when somebody calls and says, please show me your identity, when you remove your identification card, it is not just about who you are. Most importantly, it is whose you are. Because an ID speaks about your place of birth, isn't it? When they are collecting information for your ID, they collect about your parents' identification. They are saying, who is your father? And who is your mother? Meaning, identification is not only speaking about who you are. It's also speaking about whose you are. And the Holy Spirit is our seal. What God places on our life to show that we, be, we come from him and that we are authentic and original is the seal of the Holy Spirit. It's called the seal of the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 says the Holy Spirit of promise. That is the seal. Let's read to this together. What does it say? In him you also trusted after you had the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed. You do not belong to anyone. You belong to God. So you do not wait on people's opinion about you to give you identity. Ah, your identity is from God. You don't wait on your circumstances to define you. Listen, child of God, whether you have a million or 100, your value does not change. Because you are too precious to God. Your seal is from God. Says the seal that you received on the day of your redemption. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. Let's read this together. It says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. On the day that you are redeemed, that's where your identity came from. So you are not waiting for people to define you, for your confused past to define you, no. For your people at work, according to your performance, to define you. Your definition is in God. Your source is in God. And you are bought with a price. First Peter chapter 1 verse 18. First Peter chapter 1 verse 18. See, most of us put our value in silver and gold. How much gold do we have? Look at this verse. What does it say? It says, knowing that you are not redeemed. Come on, don't be tired. Let's read. Knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your endless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. 19. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You are not redeemed by corruptible things of this world. Silver and gold. That is so cheap. When you read scripture, when we go to heaven, gold is pavement. So we cannot be redeemed by such th uh, cheap things. God has redeemed us by a price you can never get anywhere. The incorruptible blood of Jesus Christ without blame or spot. So we receive our identity, our seal in God. I want you to lift up your spirit and know my source is in God. I cannot def be defined by the words of men. I cannot be defined by the people's opinion. I am defined by God. Not even my, my situation or my successes. I am defined by God. It's not about what I own, no. I have value before I receive anything. Why is the Holy Spirit important? The Holy Spirit is also important because the Holy Spirit teaches us to pray. Have you ever wondered why prayer is a struggle for you? Prayer is only a struggle for you because you depend on your own flesh. You depend on your own strength. You're, use, you're, th you're thinking that if I use my vocabularies, then I am going to pray. Uh -uh. Prayer is not a believer making. A believer avails a vessel to be used for the Holy Spirit in prayer. When I come for a prayer meeting, I just avail myself so that the Spirit can pray inside of me. Romans 8, 26. He says, for we do not even know what to pray for as we ought. 
But the spirit is helping us in our infirmities. Praying for us or making intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. How many people know here there are some needs that you cannot even utter? Yeah? The things that we find language to utter, those are cheap, cheap things. But there are things that you go through in life until you don't have words. Yeah? You don't have words to describe. The conditions that we have words to describe are very minimal things. When you go to a hospital and you can identify the sickness and describe what is troubling that guy, that is a very small problem. But how many people know here, you can go to a hospital and just sit there. You have nothing to say. Because hmm? deep things are groaning things. There are things you cannot utter. There are, there are th things you feel until you lack words to say, isn't it? How does the Spirit help us? He helps us because he, pray, he prays for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. For he such, that such as all things knows the mind of God. Verse 27. For he prays for us in accordance to the will of God. The Holy Spirit understands God's will and prays for us in accordance to the will for all the saints. Now look at that. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Isn't it? Because what? He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Give us Ephesians 6, 18. Ephesians 6 and verse 18. What does it say? It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in what? Come on, repeat that. In what? Not in your flesh. Uh -uh. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watchful to this end with all perseverance and for all the sins. In the spirit. Without the spirit, uh, you can't pray. It is not work because we do it by our own flesh. No. The spirit maketh intercession in us. In accordance to the will of God. Why is the Holy Spirit is important? Because it's the Holy Spirit that confirms our heritage. As children of God. See, many times children of God need an assurance in themselves that I belong to God. Have you ever have, had a feeling in yourself that you have left the path of faith? Sometimes you feel like you are not a Christian and I, have you? The Spirit of God confirms to us that we are the children of God. Romans 8, from verse 14. It says, for the Spirit maketh confirmation with our spirit that we are the children of God. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons. Come on, read that for yourself. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the Verse 15, let's read. It says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry. Verse 16 says, now there's something we have. He says, The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are. Wow. Bears with our spirit. So I don't need to confirmation from a prophet. Or a reverend or a pastor. <laughs> the access I have is the same access you have. Come on, child of God, be liberated in your mind. Don't embrace religion. Embrace the freedom in the Lord. You have a same access. You don't need a special office to come to every week so that you receive the word of God. The gates are opened. You are a child of God. There is no sitting in the kingdom for reverends and bishops and archbishops. No. Sons. And how are we made sons? By the spirit. As many as are led of the spirit, they are the children of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage and to fear, but the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. It means me. In my small room, I can cry, Abba, Father. That mokokoteni pusher on the road can cry, Abba, Father. That housewife in the house can say, Abba. And the Lord will answer all prayers the same. He's no respecter of persons. I am a child of God. I know we sing about it. 
we dance even to the tunes. But you have a witness in your spirit that you are son of God. Yeah? Don't sing unconsciously. Sing with revelation. I know I'm a child of God. It's the spirit that makes confirmation with my spirit. I belong to him. Yeah? I do not belong to somebody else. I Because the spirit maketh. See, now if you don't have the spirit, are you seeing the danger you are, you have? Because now you'll be busy enrolling for motivational meetings in town to understand who I am. Hmm? Hmm? To understand, and you are, you are being taught by an, an atheist <laughs> who doesn't even believe God. Seven, seven words of highly effective people. Seven what? And we teach it even to our children. Do you know the author? Yeah? Do you know the author? Have you read the story of Andrew Carnegie? Hmm? New age movement guy. He's just pumping you with them. But when it comes to scripture, we think it is not so cute when you quote it. But when it comes from a book, now all of a sudden you are learned. God has already found your identity. You are rubber stamped. You are mine. And he says, my spirit is going to confirm with your spirit that I'm a child of God. Why do we need the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit gives us power over sin. Listen, child of God, you do not obey God because of rules and regulation. Rules and regulation is religion. Do this, don't do this, do this. But the more law you are given, the more error you make. Because the Bible says, the law gives death, isn't it? The letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. You cannot guide people by rules and regulation. You guide them by life. Give them the spirit. Huh? Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Says you, so long as you are led by the spirit, you do not gratify the desires of the flesh. Verse 16. Give us verse 16. Read this for yourself. Verse 16, it says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the last. Are you seeing? So we have moved from the law. Ah. Now it's the spirit that is guiding you. Paul says, now your love constrains me. You, don't do, you, you do not do it, not because somebody else has said. Eh? But because the spirit constrains you not to do it. When you are led by the spirit, you do not gratify the desires of the flesh. But how many contradicting lives have you ever lived? Do you know there are so many people who live contradictory lives? When you see a pastor, then your life is different. When you are alone, your life is different. Please, stop these religion games. Live a life that is going to satisfy you. Be led by the Spirit. When you are led by the Spirit, it doesn't matter where you are. The Spirit will guide you. When you are guided by the Spirit, all the, the fruit of the flesh, ah, they just disappear. You do not... Take out darkness from a room by legislation. Say, now let's legislate. Huh? Let's have these 10 points. No, you put on light, isn't it? And the more you soak yourself in the spirit, the more darkness disappears. So soak yourself in the spirit. Do not concentrate on beating a hard habit or overcoming a habit. Concentrate on knowing God more. Soaking yourself in the spirit more. Things will just fall off. You will not even notice when they fell off. Because it's the spirit. Once you walk in the spirit. Ah. Why is the spirit important? The spirit of God is important because it is him that gives you the boldness. The bo boldness does not come from your education. <laughs> or from your experience. Or from your personality. No. Boldness comes from the spirit. Give us Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Acts chapter 4. Acts, Acts chapter 4, verse 31. What does it say? It says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy 
and the hey do you need boldness in your life how many times have you said today i'm going to show them i'm going to speak to them by the time you arrive you are like a chicken why? Because you are depending on your. But when you are in the spirit, ah, doesn't matter title, doesn't matter experience. You know, some of us look at people according to their status in life and according to what they own. Hmm? But the spirit of God looks at people for who they are. Paul says, I know no man after the flesh. Eh? It is not your cars or whatever you are wearing that causes me to value or respect you. No, it is the spirit of God inside of you. Isn't it? So you look at a guy who has just arrived in three V8s. Welcome, man of God. Thank you. Can you sit here? Then you find a Matambara guy. The ushers are not even interested because you look after the flesh. Look at people according to your own physical eyes. Get into the spirit. That's why he says if you're not like these little children, ah, the kingdom of God is not for you. What is the difference? A little child does not admit you into his circle because of how you look. It is by your spirit. You can visit a place with nice things and a very big vehicle. If his spirit is not with you, he will not come near. But a madman will come to that house and the parent is saying, go and play. Go and hide in the bedroom. But he will just be with him because his spirit is right. It is not about what he's carrying. Be like a little child. Observe people according to the spirit. It's the spirit of God that gives you boldness. And let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how a man looks like. This, the problem of man is one. They can look cute. They can be pedicured and manicured. But inside there is emptiness. Do not be fooled by branding. Do not be fooled by branding. Because it looks great. How many people do you see and you, 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 you walk away from them and you hear he has hacked the wife. Or he has killed the children. What was happening? They are rich people, isn't it? They have everything you are looking for. But inside is empty. Get the spirit. When you have the spirit, you are bold as a lion. Proverbs 28, 1, it says, and the rushes are as bold as a lion. Why is the Holy Spirit important? The Holy Spirit is important because the Holy Spirit equips you for your assignment, for ministry. Your assignment in life is received from the Spirit. Give us Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Acts chapter 13. Read this. He says, now in the church that was at Antioch, there was certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Lucius of, come on, don't be tired. I want you to read for yourself so that you will confirm in your scripture. There were certain prophets and Barnabas. Verse 2. Now the Holy Spirit did what? Said, isn't it? The Holy Spirit was saying, I want you to separate so and so for this department. So and so. He was not coming with Ugal to church and say, I feel like I can join protocol. Hmm? The Holy Spirit was separating people for their assignment. It's the Holy Spirit that separates you for your assignment. Because if the Holy Spirit has not separated you for an assignment, you will serve for two years, you will be tired with people. You will not receive satisfaction out of it, isn't it? And you are not even equipped in the first place for it. You just be a man pleaser. We think church is a democracy where everybody must clap to it. He's not pastoral. How pastoral was Jesus? Hmm? Do you know? He says, oh, you faithless generation. He was speaking to his ministry team. How long must I be with you? And the people that people would not choose. Let me ask you something. If Peter denied Jesus like that, in his 
the, the, the moment where Jesus needed him the most, would he be the leader of the church? Yeah? Can you choose somebody like that to oversee your ministry? Yeah? Somebody will say, I don't know him. Don't talk to me about, I am not related to them. Can you? <laughs> so you don't look at your, there are people who seem like they are frail, they are weak, they, can, they are not gifted enough, but don't use your whatever. Use your spiritual eyes. It's the Holy Spirit that separates people from ministry. You look, oh, he can talk very well. He's eloquent, he's gifted, he's educated. He's be the chairman. The Holy Spirit separates you. Look, look at Romans, Romans 12, verse 6. And he equips you for the ministry. Romans 12, verse 6. Having then gifts deferring, let's read. Having then gifts deferring according to the grace that is given to us, let us, if prophecy in proportion to, verse 7. Let us use it in our, he who teaches in, Verse 8, he who exalts in, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with, he who shows mercy with, verse 9. Verse 10. Now let's read the next verse. He says... Serving is the spirit that gives those gifts, isn't it? Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. 1 Corinthians 12. Let's read. For to one is given the word of through there, to another the word of through the same. Come on, let's continue. To another by the same, to another gifts. Read properly. There is no gift of healing. Read properly. To another, gifts in plural of healings in plural. Are you understanding? By the same? Now when you go home, you can study that. To another, to another, to another, to another, to another, by who? Now look at 11. What does it say? By one and the same works all this tree as he is. as he wills. So it's not given by men. The spirit distributes. His, this is your assignment. I'll, I'll give you this package. So if you have a package and you're in the wrong place, Hmm? You have the right package, you're in the wrong. Yeah. Or you looked at a place of honor, of glory, where people will see you, then you go there. You have no package for that place. Because the Spirit gives us He. Look at Ephesians 4 11. Ephesians 4 verse 11. Wow. Says, and He Himself gave. And who gave? You are ministry leader, and he, who is he? He gave some to be, some to be, some, some, and some. He. Are you thinking as you read? Or you're just reading? For equipping, let's go back to 12. He says, for the equipping of the saints so that they do what? What is the pastor supposed to be doing? What is an evangelist supposed to be doing? Why has God given those fivefold, what we call the fivefold ministry? To do what? To equip the saints so that they do. So who is doing ministry? Is the pastor doing ministry? Say, pastors are in ministry. Are they in ministry? They are equipping you <laughs> so that you be in 
ministry so that you go to, be a, to the bank as a discerner of spirits. You are on loan to that microfinance so that you interpret tongues. Yeah? So every strange tongue that comes to your organization, you interpret it because you are the minister there. Those in full-time ministry. There's nothing like that in scripture. Yeah? Because it is an assignment that is not there. I'm in full-time ministry. Who told you? He has called all of us. Mama Mboga is in full-time ministry. Her assignment is, as a prophet, selling Mboga, she shall prophesy. Let me see, go and see a prophet, a man of God. You are mistaken. Because hmm? you are leaving, some of you, your husband is the prophet, but you are running to another man. Yeah? <laughs> Let me speak this as a pastor. Do not glorify a man of God beyond where he's placed. Do not cause your spouse to have to compete of affection with somebody else. To feel like a man of God is you are more affectionate to him than your husband. Well, we'll teach that next time. Because if your husband does not get the same love that you give to a man of God, you have a problem. Wow. And the church said, Now these people are seated in the place, Acts chapter 2 verse 1, in one accord, in one place. The Bible says suddenly while they are seated, a noise came and filled wherever they were. And the cloven tongues of fire settled on each of them. He says, sat upon each of them. Come on, let's read this. He says, then appear to them divided tongues of fire and one sat upon most of them. He says, and he sat upon some of them. He says, he sat upon the ministry leaders. He says, he sat upon each. Verse four, and they were all filled with the, and start speak with other as the spirit gave them. The Spirit gave them utterance, but it is them who spoke. The Spirit will give you utterance, but it is you that has to do the speaking. And the Holy Spirit is here right now. Hallelujah. So I want you to ask to stand wherever you are. So that we pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit for each and every one of you. Don't be in church for long, for years. And you're just a member. God has not called you for church membership. He has called you to live a spirit-led life. Spirit-filled life. 